Today, I'm drinking a bourbon older than Space Invaders. Hey guys, and welcome to Bourbon Bites. I am Clifton, and today we are drinking some Ezra Brooks from 1970. So this bourbon actually came from a decanter. I'll throw up a picture of it right here. Um, this was actually for the Nugget Casino near Reno, Nevada. Um, not to be confused with the Golden Nugget. Um, I'm not sure if there's relation there. I don't think there is. Uh, but apparently the Nugget Casino has an 18 karat golden chicken statue. <laughs> so that's what this decanter is modeled after. Like I said, I don't have it here. This was actually um, a gift from a friend. I was buying another decanter, um, which hopefully I'll review soon. He was like, hey, I have this 1970 Ezra Brooks. Do you want it? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so that's actually how it came across this whiskey. Um, this is a 90 proof 12 year old whiskey. That means this was distilled in 1958 or sometime around there. So this is definitely a vintage whiskey. Um, now I do know that this did come from a decanter. So there is the threat of there being some lead in there. I will say I'm taking this in small portions. Um, this is very, very dark. I don't know if that's an indication of anything. Uh, like I said, I'm sort of new to vintage whiskey. Um, but I'm excited to try this out and review it for you guys. So let's go ahead and pour some. So a little bit of history about this brand itself back in the 1970s, Ezra Brooks was actually a pretty reputable company. The U.S. government actually considered it Kentucky's finest little distillery in the late 60s. So it had a reputation. It also had a reputation of being a copycat whiskey. Um, the bottle design of the regular release was very similar to Jack Daniels. Um, but this is, I believe it was a sourced product um, from Kentucky. It's still a Kentucky bourbon. I believe back in the 70s, this was sourced from the Hoffman Distilling Company, um, which as you may know, they produced some of the first bottles of the Pappy Van Winkle line. Um, so that's a pretty cool fact I just learned um, by researching this bottle a bit. Um, so yeah, Ezra Brooks was pretty well known. Nowadays, it's kind of known as you know a budget brand. They are coming out with some old Ezra that's very reputable. Um, they're currently owned by the Luxco um, Distilling Company or Luxro, um, which just started its own distillery. So that's where the brand lies now, but it has a long, long history. Of course, decanters were super popular back in the 1960s and 70s. I think pretty much every major distillery were releasing some sort of annual decanter, like bicentennial or things like that. So it was a very popular thing back in the day. And the fact that some of this stuff survived for 50 years is crazy to me. So that's why I'm so excited to get into this glass and see what we find. So on the nose, it's it's the alcohol is a little astringent. Um, the first thing you get is that proof i think um it's it's coming out of the glass a bit more than i thought um especially for some of these older whiskeys i think tend to be a little more mellow i would say but this one is pretty forward with that um you know the ethanol from the alcohol but behind it though is a really unique note and i'm still trying to pin down how i would describe that it may come from the decanter itself it does smell a little musty like it's been kept in a basement or an attic for a long time maybe 50 years but that mustiness isn't off-putting at all. And it's actually combined with a very, really, I guess I would say generic sweetness. It's not like it's like a caramel or anything specific. It reminds me of almost like like walking into a candy store. Like, you know, there's candy like on the wall out of dispensers and chocolates and, you know, Skittles and all that. Just like a very generic sweet candy sweetness. It is a 12-year-old whiskey, but I'm not getting as much of that oak note that you find in a lot of older whiskeys today. Um, that could be because it mellowed, I guess, in a decanter for 50 years. Um, but I'm curious if I'll get more of that on the taste. So cheers. Like I said with the nose, it's very alcohol forward. It actually burns a good bit more than I imagine a 90 proof whiskey to do. Um, it's The oak is definitely more there on the palate. It's really dry, but it's also... It's almost, it, it's more of like a library, like an old book. You know, I don't know about you, but I love smelling old books. It is very reminiscent of that, um, which may say that maybe something went a little wrong, although it is very clear. Like I, I, I've heard that these older whiskeys, as long as they're clear, um, they're, they're pretty safe to drink. I mean, of course I wouldn't drink this whole bottle, um, but just a little bit, you know, every now and then doesn't hurt you. But that old note that I'm so familiar with, like in an old house or an old book, the fact that that translates into a whiskey really brings it character. And I don't, I don't know if it always had that note. That may have came from where it was stored. This was purchased in an estate sale, so I don't know exactly where this bottle was for all that time. But I do know it was sealed so that it had not been opened, which is obviously a good sign. I don't think I would be drinking if it had been opened. I think with that vintage note is almost like a graham cracker note, not really like a sweetened, like a cinnamon graham cracker, but just like the plain graham crackers. I think that or like a pie crust really 
complements the sweetness that I get off this whiskey. It's not quite as rich of a sweetness that I expect from whiskey. It's not like that dark caramel or that dark sugary butterscotch or whatever note. I mean, if I had to compare it to any candy, I would almost compare it to like a Smarties. Um, so I, it has that kind of like dusty kind of powdery note to it. But of course, it's still a whiskey. It has <laughs> a lot more oak and a lot more character than that. But overall, I am really impressed. I think this is really unique. I, I've been giving out samples of this to friends. Um, I think it's a true sign to how whiskey was done in those days. And I think that's why I really, really love trying these vintage whiskeys. So please let me know if you want to see me do more of these um, decanters or vintage whiskey reviews. I have a couple more in storage. I have some from Jim Beam, some from Wild Turkey. Until next time, this is Bourbon Bites, whiskey reviews with a retro twist. And what better way to do it than with vintage bourbon. Cheers. Cheers.